Morning, friends and comrades. It's a great pleasure to he be here and to listen to the other panelists. Uh, and I do want to take up those points of, of how do we build a movement that uh, addresses the challenges globally that we face, but also uh, addresses those particular concerns of, of working people here and internationally. And I suppose one, you know, what the, the example that people might use is of workers who are in uh, uh, organized workplaces, for example, are in parts of the energy sector who may see their jobs under threat, as a, 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 an obvious example, and who therefore may adopt policies which are against the interests of the majority because of their perceived view of their own uh, short-term interests. And I think those are the things we've got to, to uh, grapple with. I'm gonna start with some examples of, of why for us, uh, in my own particular union, this is an industrial issue, and then go on to some of our wider reflections on that. Um, but just on that, on that, that first point, uh, in, in my own union, we are the, uh, one of my predecessors back in the 1950s, uh, as part, we've always had a quite a political education approach in, in the Fire Brigade Union, uh, and he coined a phrase, you need to look beyond the fire station doors. So yeah, we're fighting for justice in our workplace, but there is a big wide world outside our workplace, and we can't not engage with that wider world. Uh, and that means being uh, I taking an interest in the wider labor movement, but also in international issues uh, uh, as well. Uh, I just want to start with one example. In 2013, there was a fire in Arizona uh, at Yarnell Hill, and 25 people in total died in that fire, including 19 firefighters. And let's remember, this is in the most powerful country in the world, in the United States. And every year, firefighters are killed in the United States tackling wildfires which I think we don't need to have the debate here, are clearly uh, linked to, to climate change and the growing climate catastrophe. There's, and those 19 firefighters were members of a trade union, of the International Association of Firefighters, which is the biggest firefighter union uh, in the world. So for us, uh, in, in our industry, in our profession, this is already an industrial issue. The question of how you ch tackle extreme weather events is already a bread and butter health and safety issue for us. Uh, and you look at Australia, you, and I'm talking particularly about developed countries uh, initially. You look at Australia, you look across Europe, every year there are extreme weather events where a large number of people die and firefighters are on the front line of, of tackling that. Here in the UK, uh, we th th the extremes are not uh, as severe. But uh, you talk to firefighters today, the question of uh, large-scale flooding, for example, is something that we are tackling today, which was not being felt 25, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when I joined the, the, the Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, so there are issues, even here, for organized workers in public services of, of how do we mitigate the impact of climate change, even in the developed uh, countries. So the question for us, of does the fire service have enough boats to deal with floods? Because at one point we were sending firefighters into flood water wearing equipment that's designed to fight fires. So there's a very practical thing of we need boats, we need dry suits, we need training on how do you deal with water. These are issues that we can take into communities. Because I've, I've visited lots of communities who've been affected both by large scale flooding and seen the devastation in Britain of that type of incident. And I've seen communities that have been devastated by large-scale uh, heathland and moorland fires, which again are on a scale we've not seen uh, before and affect the fire service on a huge scale uh, in, in the United uh, Kingdom. So th as I say, for us, this is already a very practical industrial issue that we're taking up with our employers, with governments. We're making a case to the potential future government about what they need to do about so-called resilience uh, for, for communities facing uh, these new and emerging risks. And, and that is a similar debate across much of the developed, uh, developed world where you have organized fire and rescue services. But the truth is, uh, many countries don't have organized fire and rescue services in the way that we, we have here. Uh, there needs to be clearly uh, uh, a, uh, a wider international discussion 
on that. And we've then taken that experience ourselves into our own discussions in our, in our trade union, but also into the Labour Party, to which we're affiliated, and to the TUC, to which we are affiliated, to say we want to be part of a much wider discussion about how does the working class movement as a whole tackle this international challenge? How does the, working the organized working class movement as a whole tackle the question of a transition? Uh, and I, 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 mean, I find it interesting on the question of a just transition because I guess you won't find anyone anywhere saying they support an unjust transition. So I think we need to probe down a bit more what we, what we mean by uh, some of the terms that we, uh, we use. Uh, I think for us there are huge class issues involved, both as, as some of the speakers have said, that the, uh, the communities affected here worst are poorer uh, working class and poorer communities. And on a global scale, that is the, the inequalities are obviously far, far greater. So we talk about a flood here that where, that where people may be injured or in some extreme cases killed, you look elsewhere in the world and hundreds if not thousands of people are killed or injured in those type of incidents. So we have to raise that. So internationalism has to be uh, part and parcel of this uh, discussion. I think the question, uh, you know, the, the equally, the other side of, for me, the class question is yes, the, 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 this is going to, is already and will disproportionately affect working people and the poorer people of the world. But the other side of that, which is, has been touched on to some, some degree in other contributions, is that there is another side of that class divide, the people who actually run things. And I would argue there's actually a complete uh, incompatibility between a just transition and the system under which we currently live. The idea, in my view, that uh, capitalist corporations are going to help us in a just transition, I think is naive. Uh, and we have to set out very clearly an alternative vision of what that means, which means placing power in the hands of ordinary people, transforming uh, the economy, uh, and that also, I, in my view, means taking the power out of the hands of uh, uh, other people, corporations, big business around the world, uh, and so on. So I think um, the, uh, as I said, said in, in introducing me, the, I think working people, the landless, the poor across the world have to be central to uh, the, this discussion, to building uh, uh, new international movements. I don't have any great faith in, frankly, any of the governments of the world. I don't have any great faith in the United Nations to resolve uh, these challenges. I think if we're going to change things, we are going to have to build, and th there are the seeds of it, but it's not remotely on the scale that is needed. We're going to have to build a movement from the bottom up that actually sets our own agenda, takes advice from specialists and plots, plots out uh, alternative visions and alternative uh, options, but actually builds that power from the ground up uh, to create a very different world to the one that we live in uh, today. And, and that's my perspective on the, the, uh, the climate crisis and how, how we try to raise that issue within our trade union and our education events and in, into the TUC and other organizations that we have, uh, that we have dialogue with.